Hi everyone, Zeke Samples with Surreal Body Solutions. I want to show you a few exercises today that will help with arm definition as well as arm size. A lot of my online clients ask me to perform videos for them because it will help them as they work out in their gym at home or also in their gym that they go to that's a commercial gym. Um, knowing the right forms of exercises is important to reaching your goals. The first movement I want to start with is called a drag curl. It's my version of a drag curl anyway. Hand position on the bar needs to be right outside of pockets, so right outside of shoulder width basically. If your wrists are too far out, you're going to have torque on your wrists. If their wrists are too close in, you're also going to have some torque. Um, just over time, it could start to hurt the back of the wrist. But if your wrist stays straight, you're going to have a little bit better feel throughout the range of motion. Now the body posture itself, what you're going to have, the, the way I like to do it is a foot forward and also chest up. What that will do from the initial point is allow you to touch your chest when you get in this proper form and also keep your back safe. If you have feet side by side, you could swing a little bit. Part of the drag curl is that you have an isolated elbow the entire time. So a foot back, chest up, and the third thing is to bring this bar to your waist. When you bring that bar to your waist, your elbow stays back. Now it doesn't matter if you're going fast or slow, that elbow is always in that same spot. So you can see how you can protectively use it to do more weights while possibly gaining more mass in your biceps by keeping that bar back. Range of motion is shorter. It's not a regular curl. To do that, you have to move the elbow. Since you locked it back here, that range of motion is right to the chest, waist to chest that whole time. Okay, that's the drag curl. Hammer curls. Hammer curls can be done standing or seated. What we're gonna learn today is a seated version. Bench is gonna be 75 degrees. So one or two notches lower than you would place it for your shoulder press. The position that we're gonna have for the posture, head back against the bench the entire time. If you keep your head forward, like for example, looking at yourself in the mirror, there's a different angle that you're gonna have from the chest to the top of your head that is different from the chest to the waist. From the chest to the waist is that 75 degrees that you have on the bench. But now that I'm looking forward, my head has changed my shoulder angle. So my shoulders have rounded forward in order to do the exercise. So keeping that head back is going to separate the shoulders and isolate your posture a lot better. You can look out of the top bottoms of your eyelids if you'd like, but if you keep this head back, you're going to feel more of a stretch throughout the bicep in this range of motion. The grip I also use is more of like what I call an okay grip when I work with my clients. So it looks like you're saying okay to somebody. The grip is at the top of the handle, right at the base of the bottom of the weight. The reason I have that grip here is because I can control where I place that dumbbell to my shoulder a lot more than I could if I was gripping it in the center. I'm starting to use different angles everywhere. I can do anything with a firm grip. So if my form isn't perfect, there's a lot of stuff that can happen. But if I force it to rest at the top of that handle, I'm always going to end with that same spot. It also doesn't flex my forearm. Firm grips would flex my forearm. So light okay grip at the top, heads back, shoulders are back. You notice also how the dumbbell is hanging. I only have one um, index finger and thumb across the dumbbell. I don't have a full grip. If I had a full grip, I'd be here. You know, I'm flexing my forearms getting some forearm power in there and some shoulder power, almost like a front lateral raise. But if I have that okay grip, it's a complete bicep curl the entire time, the entire range of motion. Now with shoulders back, I'm curling all the way to my front deltoids. 
not resting them on my deltoids. You could if you need to, like if you're in your home gym or on your eighth rep, 10th rep, and you don't have a spotter, you could rest them here in the middle of your set in order to complete a few more repetitions. But generally you just want to have that range of motion that's fully extended arm, tapping the deltoid. Shoulders back the entire time. Little pause at the bottom, then around them. Pause, then around them. Not everything that we are going to learn today is so much of a strength exercise. There are a few things we'll learn that can be considered shapers. The first movement that we're gonna learn for triceps is your basic dip off of the side of a flat bench. This is a nice one to do at home. It's a safe one as well for a beginner. And then even the advanced level user can place weights on their lap in order to make this more difficult. But the general posture, there's a few varieties. Your feet can be close together. Body is close to the bench. This keeps your posture safe and debatably your joints safer as well. Because if you get stuck at the bottom of this exercise, let's say you get a cramp or you force one more rep and you just can't do it, you can slide these hands off and you're safe to return back to the bench. Opposed to if you push your posture way out here and you got stuck down here, now you've got a lot of pinching going on in your bursa, tendon, and also your rotator cuff and your shoulders if you were to get stuck. Now levels of difficulty can increase. You could keep your legs back, it's using a lot of legs, at the same time you're using your triceps, but it's a good posture for beginners to get the feel of the exercise. Or you could place the feet out. Further, further you place them out, the more the difficulty increases. And then one of the most advanced ways is to place weights on your lap. I would place weights on your lap first. Wiggle out to the edge as far as you can before you feel like you're about to fall off. Then put your hands in place. The reason I do that is so that when I drop my first rep, my body is still close to this bench, just as I explained in the general first rule. Now, if I want to increase the difficulty, I could take my legs out a little bit. And if I didn't have somebody that could help me take the plates off of my waist, I can straighten my legs and softly drop them to the side. So there's a few varieties of how you can do and perform a bench dip for your triceps at home or in the gym. Tricep kickback. This is an exercise that we're gonna perform using a slight incline bench. You may see a lot of magazines promote this exercise as someone with a knee on the bench, elbow by their side, and only extending their arm straight back. Nothing wrong with that. We're just gonna make it a notch better. So, got a 45 degree bench. Now you've got a forearm you can rest on the bench. Not even a wrist. The wrist could lock your elbow, lock your shoulder. You still haven't done your spine any favors. But a forearm, your spine is completely relaxed. Hips are relaxed. So you can concentrate on what's going on with this one arm instead of what's going on with my neck while I'm trying to do something with my arm. The grip posture that we're gonna use for your tricep kickback is thumbs with the fingers. What I call a cup grip. A flexed grip or a firm grip you would have with that thumb across your finger. So it's gonna potentially flex your forearms, flex your biceps. But if you put that thumb with the fingers, there's no flex in that forearm. There's flex when you cross that thumb across your fingers, but not when you put it with those fingers. It allows me to use all these fingers to press up on this dumbbell when I fully extend it. I'm gonna feel a pinch real high in that tricep as I flip around. And that's by using all fingers working together. 
I still had a thumb on top, I will not feel it as much. Give it a try. Try two reps with your thumb on top, turning it upside down, and the rest of them with your thumb on the bottom, you'll feel a difference. That thumb works against those fingers just enough to where it keeps you from feeling the maximum resistance of the tricep kickback. Two moves for the shoulders. Definition moves. You could make one of the two moves into a mass builder. The one I'm referring to is your side lateral raise. But in general, these two moves that I'm about to show you um, are considered your shaping exercises. Your front lateral raise. The posture of the arms, you want to think about your elbows slightly higher than your wrists, maybe like an inch. If your wrists get higher than your elbow, think about the range of motion that we've got. Wrists higher than elbows. If I kept that going and growing, it's like a shoulder press. So I've got more muscles involved in this movement, and I've got more power involved from the wrong places with the wrist above that elbow. But if I flip that shoulder forward and have that elbow slightly higher than the wrist, my visual has always been like a, a puppet with strings, and that string's on my elbow. So if that elbow is my leader, that's where my brain is thinking about. It's isolating that outside deltoid a lot more than if that hand was up. So if you're performing 10 repetitions and your hands end up above your elbows, you need to drop that weight so you can get a little bit better form. Remember, this is a, this video in particular, it's a shaping exercise. Elbows slightly forward, just raising up to horizontal, and then back down by your side. Seated or standing, seated is a little more of a challenge. You don't have extra muscles that can help you out. Arm circles. Arm circles are a great finisher for females that don't preferably like to do an upright row or even a dumbbell shrug because they don't want that trapezius muscle to build to give them like an extended neck like guys have. So they want something that would work those same muscles indirectly, still give them that appearance of great shape and symmetry in the upper back, but something that's toned down a little bit. Arm circles are a great alternative. Arms out to the side, 20 to 25 reps clockwise, 20 to 25 counterclockwise. So the same muscles that are used in an upright row are in a shrug. The moment you lift those arms, not in front of you, you keep them back, apart, diagonal, perpendicular to your body. Perform those circles. You're gonna feel that burn through your, through your deltoid and also through your trapezius a little bit, but in a way that will not bulk them. So we covered a lot of exercises today. We covered the drag curl, we covered the hammer curl, we covered the side lateral raise, the arm circle, and we also covered the tricep dip off the side of the bench and the tricep kickback. Three to four sets would be pretty sufficient for the exercises that we covered today. A rep range of 10 to 12 to 15 to 20. I say that so broad because the 10 to the 12 could be the male that's performing it for muscle gain. The 12 to 15 could be the male or female that's performing it for symmetry and definition. And then the 20 is gonna be your volume. Your volume training is definitely more for definition. It's gonna burn more calories. Thank you for watching the video for today. Again, my name is Zeke Samples with Surreal Body Solutions. Please don't forget to punch that like button and please subscribe to my channel so you can see much more videos to come. And in the description below, you can also see more links about nutrition, exercise, and a few of my social media channels. Have a great rest of your week.